Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. Today is a very special video because we have a very special guest and that is the main man Sharky, beta squad member, creator of SDS as well. I'm sure you know him. Welcome to the channel. What's up guys? I'm here. You know, a big moment for me to be on the FPL Raptor channel. Uh, this is my big break, so I'm excited. Thank you so much for bringing, <laughs> Thank you for bringing me on. <laughs> no worries at all, my man. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So guys, in today's video, we're going to take a look at Sharky's probably final Game Week 1 team. He seems very confident and very happy with it. And then at the end of the video, we have four different questions that you've asked us over on Twitter. And we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. The reason that I love this team so much, I wasn't really sure what I was going to get from Sharky, to be honest. Because this is going to be his first like proper season where he plays yeah. every single week. I wasn't sure what we were going to get. It's actually a really nice balance of it's got a lot of good picks in there. But also some different things that I haven't seen. And a different formation to what I've seen as well. So we're going to go through some of the players in detail. The first position I wanted to discuss Sharky is the goalkeeper spot you've got a 4.5 million pound goalkeeper and at the moment you've got Pickford do you think you'll end up with Pickford and what is it that you like about him so um Pickford you know what? I like Pickford you know he, he does face a lot of shots especially at Everton you know last season they were struggling last couple of seasons they were struggling but he's a good keeper you know and it's opening the season the opening the season over up giving his firm I think a clean sheet is coming his way um and I, I, it's a good shot stopper and I like the guy and I don't know if I want to stick with him for, for very long. Initially, I had Onana. So I put yeah. Onana initially. And I saw what happened when he did the friendly. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I don't know about that guy, man. Um, but yeah, so yeah. at the moment, at the moment, I, I've found to pick him for this. And um, hopefully he proves me right. And I don't have to switch him so early on because I can use my transfers to other players. Whoa, what do you think yeah. about? What do you think about a pick for this? Be honest. Be no, honest. I, I, I no, genuinely, this is a spot. I'm gonna roast you later on in the draft. Okay, but no, cool, in this cool. spot, I, I actually I like it because like Everton it. have kept four clean sheets out of four in preseason. Three of those had Pickford in goal. So Pickford's yeah. had three three, three games and kept three clean sheets. Yeah. Yep. And and like you say, the, what you want from a keeper in FPL is you want saves and mm -hmm. clean sheets and good fixtures. And he's got a mixture of pretty much everything. You would expect under Sean Dyche that Everton will continue to improve defensively. So that's actually a spot where I'd say my favourite two 4.5s at the moment are probably Pickford and Johnston, Crystal Palace and Everton. I feel like they're yeah. the two defences I would target. So yeah, I absolutely have no issue with Pickford. I like that a lot. I would yeah. just say... It, on the bench, you've got Ariola. I would maybe get Everton's backup keeper just because I think that's, that's maybe oh. just a nice way to make sure that if Pickford ever did miss out, yeah. he's at least got a, a playing keeper on the bench. But other than that, I'm I'm, I'm okay with a, with a starting goalkeeper. I think that's okay. pretty decent. Remember, remember, like you said, it's my first full season. I'm going to make this is it. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah. I'm we, we should reiterate I'm actually really that. I'm actually really We'll talk about more, but this season, I'm pretty confident. There's more at stake okay, for me this year. I'm, I'm doing, literally doing a video with you. This so is it. You, can't, you can't have a bad season. You can't, can't have a bad season now. You know, and, I, and, people, and, and, and even if I do, I'm being I'm letting myself be held accountable now because now yeah. that I've done a video of you and I'm going to my game week one team, when it gets to like game week 23, people will be like, hey, yeah. oh, how are you getting on? I saw you do a video of Raptor at the start of the season. So now I have to I have to stick to it. You know, put yeah. myself no, in the fire line. Yeah, I'm tired. It is true. Right, back four. Uh, oh, I hate to keep saying these nice things to you, mate, but the back four is actually really, really strong as well. We've got Stones, Gabriel, yep. Estepinian, Chilwell. I'm yep. actually going to not really discuss Gabriel, Estepinian, Chilwell too much because they've been in pretty much every draft from what I've seen. I think uh -huh. the reasoning for having those three makes a lot of sense. That is actually my back three at the moment. I'm currently in a 3-5-2 oh, okay, and okay. I have Gabriel, Estepinian same, and same, Chilwell. Same line, yeah, same back line. Yeah, exactly. The one that I am interested in just discussing a little bit, because obviously they will be your rivals this season. If you don't know, Sharky is an Arsenal fan. You've got John Stones in there. Do you like the idea of covering the City defence just for the clean sheets? Or is it this new, more advanced role that Stones is yeah. playing that's catching your attention? A, a mixture of both. I think you'll get... But the thing with City is difficult because you don't really know who's going to play. Especially now they yep. sign another defender. They've got Guardio. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I've got John Stones. Yeah, great. He, everyone knows how, how good he is. He's the new role to last season, but... You know what City and Pep are like. You don't really know if he's going to keep playing that role. You don't even know yep. if he's going to be cons yeah, consistent on a game. So the John Stones pick for me was a bit of a risk, but I wanted the City defender in there. Um, yeah. So it was so I was like, and if I'm going to pick a City defender, I might as well pick one that I reckon might even go into the midfield and get a yeah. hand and more blaze going forward. Um, yeah. Like I said, that was the risky one for me. And I don't know how long I want to stick to that, but yeah. it's similar to like. Paris on the bench, it's kind of the same thing. You're not a blame out, but if he does, he'll be he, he can't still defend up, but he'll get assists, he'll get involved in play yeah. going forward. Yeah, the Stones one is it, the first couple weeks for me is just just to beat it out. And like I said, the other three defenders, they're kind of like guaranteed picks right now, the safe yeah. ones. And Stones for me, 
I can't not have a city defender. Like city are going to destroy teams sometimes. You know, clean sheets. So I just get the points. When Trippier last season, though, was the one. I don't know about yeah, this he season. Was, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about this yeah. season. I um, Honestly, if I was to list the top four defenders that I would choose in FPL, those are the four. Oh, wow. Well, okay. This is when we're going to move on to roasting. Perisic is not a good pick, in my opinion. Yeah. So the reason for that is he's just played barely any minutes in preseason. Yeah. And it looks like Adogi will be first choice left back and Reguilon will be second choice left back. And mm. it doesn't look like he's going to get into the front three either because it looks like Kulisevsky, Son, Kane. And even if Kane leaves, it looks like it'll be Richarlison, Kulisevsky and um, Son as well. So basically, so what's I can't he doing see... there then? Why is it the club? So I, I feel like he well, there's, there have been rumours about him potentially leaving, but I don't yeah. think Perisic is going to get enough minutes at five. So what I would recommend is you either drop Perisic down and keep some money in the bank, which is yeah. always nice, or you go for a Dogi, who is their new left back. He looks really, really attacking and he's 4.5 million. So mm. he's actually cheaper than Perisic. So that would be the first spot in your team. I'd, I'd maybe recommend okay. a change. It's just downgrade Perisic a little bit and and go for another 4.5 million pound defender. The, the, the thing opinion. is I mean, with me, yeah. The thing is with me, I don't really think about my bench too much and you're right, I probably yeah. should. Yeah. And you've actually only got two Arsenal assets at the moment, which we'll move on to in a second. So you mm. could even go for a Saliba at five. You could have Gabriel, Saliba and Saka. I mm. mean, it does take up your third Arsenal spot, but that would even be an option if you wanted to have a bit more or a bit more depth on the bench. But in general, I think the defence looks really solid. I like the back four. Where you might not even know this because obviously you're not deep into the FPL mm. community, but I have not seen a single person, and this isn't an exaggeration, a single person on a 4-3-3. So you are really? the first person. And this will be the second thing that I would say about this draft is this season, the midfield midfielders in FPL look absolutely amazing. There yep. are probably 15 to 20 that I would really want. So a piece of advice that we'll often give is to try and have five midfielders Good just one. because there are so many options that you might want to move to. The likes of Eze and Bermo, Fernandez, Martinelli, Erdegaard aren't obviously in your team that Good. you might want to move to. Madison, Foden, Sterling even when, when Chelsea's fixtures improve. So with, a, with this 4-3-3, the starting 11 is amazing. But if any of these midfielders pop up because you've got Nakamba and Anderson on the bench and you've got three really solid midfielders already let's say for example Eze and Burmo look really good yeah. you're going to really struggle to get there so what do you think on that are you just happy with the starting 11 and you think that it so, will do the job or do you, do you think me, flexibility is important yeah for me right now the way I was thinking was like you said the midfielders the midfielders are, 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 are forwards that I've just been made midfielders in their field you know so I, yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I see as I've got six forwards in my team and then these guys are all yeah. goal scorers but when we get into them they're all goal scorers. They're all going to be uh, attacking threats. Um, I'm going to change my team, especially early on, what I love, just to see what I like, formations that I like. But going into the season, especially with the midfield that I've got, is three big names. I'm not 100% sure on one of them, but you can't, you, there's no, there's nothing to go off right now. The season yeah. is blank. It's a black canvas. So right now, I'm just hoping on luck. And as the season yeah. goes, I'll tweak. I might have an extra midfielder, two extra midfielders. Um, right now, it's literally just something that I fancy and I was like let me try this um, some of them was like prediction that so I strike it out put in that I'm hoping it will fly off the bat start, uh, straight away yeah. but like I said it's first first game week obviously I'm not experienced as you are you probably have intel go back and you've done this for so long you probably you take calculated risks I'm just taking a risk off the bat and just saying you know yeah, yeah. this is the formation I think looks good for me hopefully yeah. it works early on and then I want to keep adjusting as the season goes on. So we'll see. I have made a bad decision, but that game makes me so no. confident. Confident. I, I, like, still I like that approach. Yeah. I like that approach. And I, I think, as you say, calculated risk. If you want to do genuinely well in FPL, and I'm not talking about just have a decent season, have a really good season, mm -hmm. you need to pick good players, but take risks at the right points. Like you're never mm -hmm. going to do really well in FPL by picking the players that everyone else is picking. So I like that. I would just say, like I said, in midfielders in FPL tend to be the best because they get extra points for clean mm -hmm. sheets, extra points for goals, and they're just so explosive. We've seen it in the past, the likes of Mane and Salah mm -hmm. and Saka and Rashford last season. So I would just be a little bit maybe a little bit wary that you've just got um, three midfielders versus kind of four or five that other people might have. But the reason you do have three midfielders, let's get on to him because he's the main thing that I wanted to discuss with you. You do have Mohamed Salah in your team. He's Ooh. obviously for season upon season in FPL been an incredible option. He's one of the best players ever to grace the Premier League. I mean, you discussed this on SDS yourself yeah. about how good Salah was in the Prem. But he takes up a lot of budget. And if you drop Salah to a Bruno Fernandes, then all of a sudden you've got 4 million to spend if you do Salah to Bruno. So how confident are you you want to start with Salah? And if you do want to start with him, what is it that you like about him? Salah's one of those players that would burn me if I didn't get in and he flew blinds yeah. straight off the bat. He's one of those players that I just, I'm like, I don't want to miss the boat. Salah's that kind of player where he said he, he, he could go for Bruno Fernandes, 
a lot cheaper yeah. and Bruno's obviously a very uh, productive player. But you know, Salah is one of those players, same as Haaland, these kind of players, it's like, and Kane is what I'm going, we'll go into, I don't have him, but those three players, I can't have all three of the same team, but those three players are yeah. players where it's like, if I don't start with them and yeah. they start flying on the back, it will burn me. You know, it will yep, destroy me. So it's like, I don't, you know, I don't want to miss out on, on Salah just in case. And we've yep. seen time and time again, it, the stats show, we'll get 20 goals in the Premier League at least. So yep. I just don't know if it's going to be straight off the start of the season or if it's going to be second half of the season. But I just don't want to miss the boat. So I want him to trip us out. So it was a big, that was a risk, but it's a risk I'm willing to take for sure. And it's playing Chelsea first game of the season. It's a bit of a, you know, but that again, you never know. Yeah. I don't know if you've looked this far ahead, but in game week two, Haaland's got Newcastle at home and in game week two, Salah's got Bournemouth at home. Mm -hmm. This is a big debate in the community about whether you just stay really safe with captaincy and kind of captain Haaland every week yeah. because he will be the most captain player. Obviously, you don't know now. Let's say that Salah and Haaland both look decent in game week one. Going into game week two, Haaland's got Newcastle, which is obviously a very tricky fixture, even though it is at home for Haaland. And then Salah's got Bournemouth at home. It was a 9-0 fixture last year. It was. Would, do you think you are the, the kind of person that would be willing to risk captaincy on Salah in game week two? Or are you trying to start the season quite steady? And do you think you'll just captain who everyone else is captaining, which is probably Haaland? Um, I don't know yet. That's going to be a tough decision. But I think early on, I'm kind of a steady player. Just to, yeah. you know, stay in it, stay... You know, stay stay near the top of the, all, all the leagues that I'm in, and then when it gets to the halfway point, to the second half, I start making different decisions to everyone else because yep. I'm not going to gain more points than someone else if we have the same captain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, that, so, so it's, it's a lose lose. You know, it's a, it's like you see, but we stay the same, or I get less. Uh, you know, so it's literally the only thing is I have to change my captain just to what you have. So either I burn or I, I take a uh, big gap away from you. Salah was Harmon as captain for next for game two. I stopped. Obviously, I've seen the fixtures. They favor with both of them. Uh, yep. But I don't know. At this moment, I'm thinking I might uh, probably keep Harlan as the star, uh, the captain. But yep. Also, it depends on their first game. It depends on the first game. They're both playing away from home, but also it does depend on the first game. See how the teams look, um, how the yep. teams you know start flying. But that's going to be an interesting one. Who am I going to captain that game? But like, last season, you remember, there was one game with that captain, Nico Williams, and he scored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That, 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 that was genius. That was genius. Um, oh, a genius or luck? I don't, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but yeah. I guess we'll never know. Well, I guess we'll never know. That's I true. I guess we'll never know. Um, we'll see if you can repeat that this season. Yeah. Uh, the final, the final two positions in the team that I want to discuss. Obviously, you've got Erling Haaland. Is Jackson and João Pedro? You are in a three-four-three. A lot of people at the moment playing over a three-five-two or even a four-five-one which is basically they, they're not really sure which forwards to pick. Mm -hmm. I would say at the moment, at the time of me recording this, it looks like Jesus and Nkunku are both, especially Nkunku, out long term. They won't be available for game week one. Yep. So I would say realistically the, the four forwards that I've been looking at are obviously Harry Kane if he, if he ends up staying, Ollie Watkins, mm -hmm. Jackson and João Pedro. At the moment you've got Jackson and João Pedro. Do you want to just talk about why you've picked both of those? Because obviously both are... Obviously, João Pedro is not new to the league, but new to the league this season. Yeah. And yeah. Bob, they've obviously both got their wrists, but they obviously also feel like quite high upside picks. And I feel like that's probably one of the reasons. But yeah. do you think you'll end up on these two? Have Watkins and Kane interested you at all? 100%. Kane, I'm looking at. The thing with Kane is, apart from last season, he started off flying, but usually he doesn't. August doesn't really start off flying, yeah. you know? So, I don't know. I'm hoping, I mean, as an Arsenal fan, I'm hoping he starts off slow anyways, just as a gunner. <laughs> And obviously yeah. for FPL reasons, I hope he doesn't start off straight away flying. So then, but definitely Kane is someone I would want to have in my team. The guy is, in my opinion, the best, still the best striker in the company. Full stop. I'm his best goal scorer maybe, but Kane is the best striker. So I want him in my team. He'll get assists, he'll get goals. He's the good all-round player. Um, but right now, start of the season usually doesn't start off flying, like I said, barring the exception of last season. Um, Watkins, what I like, because he goes and runs. Um, yeah. So he went around last season. I had him for a good chunk of last season as well. But Jao Pedro, I think, is a good pick. Okay. Right, I'll just touch a good team. You know, such a free-flowing yeah. team. I love the way they play. I've got a stupid in the team as well. Hopefully, though, yeah. you know, help each other out. And, and, and he, he was cheap. He was a good price. And yeah. then get a lot of minutes. He spent a lot of money in him, so he play a lot. And Nico Jackson, I think, he's a new player. He's a completely new player. Chelsea, you don't know what they're going to do. That's For me, that's a risk. He looked good in pre-season, but... This Charles team haven't played together. It's, it's a new team. I don't even think they have a show yeah. sponsor. That's how much of a mess they are. So, <laughs> so I don't yeah. know. I don't know about this guy. But 
going up to Intel, my, my, my boy Faisal is a SDS member. Um, he likes him. He likes him. He yeah. says he said he's a good player. He said he has, he has high hopes for him. I think he just put his stocks in him just because if he does well, he wants to like brag about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I That's think he's really <laughs> seen him play apart from two games he plays against Real Madrid every year. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, that for me is I'll try it. But Chelsea strikers don't usually do well. So I don't know how yeah. long I don't know how long I have him in. I just don't know how long. But imagine the scenes. First game at the bridge against Liverpool. He scores. Imagine. You can see it. Yeah, I could see, see it. it as well. I could see it as well. He's a hero instantly. So and that confidence can help him carry on in the season and get get get, get good run of um, goals in. So I like it to start, but I don't, I'm not set on him for the whole season. Pedro, I'm more set on it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I, I think mm. Jackson's a nice pick. I, I do think that Nkunku's injury will actually, I think it will increase the amount of minutes that Jackson gets because he's going to be the pretty much only attacking option they really have. But I think it will decrease his output slightly because Nkunku in preseason, the runs that he was making is the reason that Jackson was getting goals, even mm. if he wasn't directly assisting. So I don't think Nkunku got many of any assists in preseason, but the runs that he made created space for Jackson. So we'll have to see how they line up. But as you say, the first two fixtures for Chelsea aren't great, but if he does get goals going into game week three, Chelsea these fixtures really improve exactly and you'll be laughing jackson will rise in price everyone will be scrambling to get him you've already got the returns plus exactly. you've got him going into the nice fixtures so it's a risk but that's one risk that i would be perfectly happy taking um, exactly exactly yeah cool so that's the team i again the, the, the positions that i would look at is i would downgrade perisic mm. i think that's a position where you could maybe just get a slightly better safer option for minutes mm. outside of that I, I don't mind the 4-3-3 but i would just be thinking about do you have a way apart from selling salah because you won't want to do that really of getting another midfielder in there you could downgrade jackson or you could i suppose make the the defense a little bit cheaper because you've got stones and chill or and two five million so maybe yeah. just think about can you rejig it slightly to try and just get a fourth midfielder even if it's only like a, a 6.5 and burmo as a or matoma i just feel like it will improve the structure of your team a little bit but that would be my only opinion i might do listen this is i yeah. still got a few days to to adjust my team so yeah. you know what that yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Something we do on this channel is we we have an AI that rates it from over on Fantasy Football Hub. So it's an uh, artificial oh. intelligence. They basically rate your team over the first five game weeks out of 100%. Annoyingly, they absolutely love your team. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So you're currently rated at 95% according to Fantasy Football Hub, and 64.5 predicted points in game week one, which is one of the higher drafts that I have seen. How do you feel about that, that the AI back you? Wow. So the thing is, right, <laughs> I always said artificial intelligence is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. if, the AI, yeah. if the AI machine, whatever you put it in, rated my team 95 out of 100, yeah. come on. It's got to be good. It's got to be it's good. Gotta be good. It's algorithms and stuff. You know, exactly. if, you, hey, if you're watching viewers, FPO Sharky, yeah. follow yeah. me. I must you, are, you are going to be on, on the graphic as FPL Sharky. Oh, so please. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. <laughs> That's me. I am buzzing um, with that. I'm actually buzzing with that. Yeah, it's sick. Um, if you want to get your team rated for free, there is a link in the description. It's completely free to do. You can check sick. it out, see if you can beat Sharky's 95%. Um, but that is honestly a really good rating. So that is Sharky's team currently going into Game Week 1, of course, subject to change. Let's now jump into the questions that you've asked us over on Twitter and, and discuss a few things in some more detail. So as you've seen Sharky's team, we've now got four different questions that you've asked us over on Twitter that you would like myself and Sharky to discuss. The first is, of course, around Arsenal. Again, if you've not checked out SDS, there will be a link down below. It is the best football channel on YouTube by some distance. One of my Oof. favorite channels as well. I haven't missed a single episode during preseason. It's kept me busy and interested in football as well. So do check it out. But Sharky is an Arsenal Love. fan. He knows a lot about Arsenal. He, I, I believe you're a season ticket holder. Is that correct? I am. I am a season ticket holder, yeah. yeah. So you Proudly. go to all the games. You watch all, watch all of it. So we obviously Arsenal are a team that we're very interested in FPL. Number one, because they're obviously an excellent team and we're expecting another strong season, but mm -hmm. the assets are priced very well. And also generally Arteta doesn't rotate as much as someone like a Pep Guardiola where the assets become really difficult to try and predict. So firstly, I will just note in your latest draft, you've only got two Arsenal, which I was surprised about. Um, but just give us a little bit about what you're expecting from Arsenal this season. Do you expect yourselves to challenge again? And also in FPL, who should we keep an eye out for, especially given the Jesus injury? Yeah. Obviously, you've got Saka and Gabriel. They feel fairly safe. Martinelli, Erdegaard and Ketia Havertz. Who yeah. do you think should be that, that third asset? Yeah. So the reason I've got two is I wanted to have Jesus, but the injury. I get you, I was thinking of having him, but I was like, you know, I might take the risk on Nicholas Jackson a bit more. Um, yeah. I, will have, I will have three Arsenal players probably for a big part of the season, like last season. 
Oil Guard, I'm such a good pick. Oil Guard, such a good player. Um, Martinelli as well is always going to be a good player because he's going to start almost every single game. He's part of that fluid front three where last season Oil Guard, Saka and Martinelli, they all got like 15 goals well reach. You know, so definitely yeah. those three are the smartest picks to have. And the back, Gabriel, because he's obviously defensively sound. We keep hopefully keep a lot more clean sheets. We've got David Ryan now as well, so you never know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So we've got two good keepers, so hopefully keep them a lot more clean sheets. And obviously Gabriel as well, you know, he can get up there and he's an aerial threat, he can get more than goals. He always gets a couple goals a season. Um, Havertz, Havertz, hear me out. He might okay. be an outside pick. Yeah. He might be an outside pick. There's this, this, if he's even in the community show, he didn't score. But he got a couple of chances. He's such a he's such a tall, yep. all good player. And if he just yep. gets it right, he can get a hand in quite a lot of goals. A lot of chances come his way. If he just becomes a menace, those cutbacks will come in and it happened. Yep. See, then they didn't put him away, but Saka beat his man and he'll cut it back and the Habas is there. You know, Martin the same thing, Martin would beat his man down the line, come in, cut it back. Habas will be there. So if Habas playing up front, especially I think early on in the season, he will also. And he's so tall and he's so awkward and he's technically sound, you know, he's technically sound. Yep. So I think he can, if he just got a confidence, that's all it is, confidence, he could be a good pick. You know, he could be outside sharp yep. for 15 goals plus in the Premier League, 15 goals that around that mark in Premier League. You never know. So I'm looking yep. at Alberts as well. Just needs to get him to get a few other games, let the team gel because it's not fair judging players on three games in preseason, one of them being against MLS All-Stars. What does that mean? Yeah. You know, like these guys yeah. just started playing with each other. You don't know that he likes passes in behind or he likes specific pass and he go you never know. So I like Havertz as outside shot, but obviously the safest ones, Odegaard by the Saka, the attacking options or the myth options. Gabriel at the back for sure, Saliba as well. Um Saliba scored as well for Arsenal last season. Worldy as well, yeah. by the way, early yeah, in the was, season. Yeah. So yeah. there's uh, there's like you said, there's a bunch of plays you could have in fast and so I'm excited, but yeah, Gabriel Jesus hopefully gets him, gets getting back and he's up. He's technically unbelievable as well, but he just once again doesn't score many goals. So if I was to force you right this second to pick a third Arsenal asset, because at the moment you only have Gabriel and Saka, yep. who do you think that third Arsenal asset would it would it be an attacker? Would it be double up on the defence? Obviously you want Gabriel Jesus, but he's not fit at the moment. So mm -hmm. going into game week one, who would be your third Arsenal asset? If you would force me to bring in the third Arsenal asset, I I would take out Rashford and I'd put an Odegaard. Odegaard. Okay, yeah. perfect. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, take... a lot of people are on Martinelli at the moment. But if, is it for the expected minutes or do you think you'll just get a lot of returns? What is it you like about Erdogan ahead of Martinelli? Mix of both. He's our captain. So he's going to be... Uh, Martinelli come get subbed off a lot. He's yeah. one of our first, pe first players to get subbed off. Erdogan, had, so he's got a lot... His expected minutes are a lot more. And he he gets goals and assists. Like, he started scoring yeah. a lot last season. Before it was assists. And you could tell... When I'm at, when I'm at the games, you could tell he would... The ball would come on the head like just on the inside of the box and he would go do that fancy pass just to you know that yeah. extra pass whereas now the season I just went I'm seeing him just hit it you know first time cut across it the Tony Cruz you know the passing into the ball corner striking it the game against Chelsea where we played it at my home he scored the same goal twice in that game you know so we're seeing yeah. it now we're seeing it. so and Rashford the player I'll take out because Rashford I'm I'm not 100% on him because he's a, he's a player he had a power match season he's not really getting super like Great player, yeah. like, like he's been more of a good goal scorer over a period of time. I agree with that. Whereas yeah. I don't know how he's going to start the season. So I think, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'm thriving about Salah Hill. I mean, I, if, it, if it works out, it works out. And Saka, obviously, yeah. is our main outlet. So I'll take out Rashford and I'll put him on Okay, I like it. Cool. Yeah. Moving on to question number two. This is an FPL specific question here. Yep. It's around how you make decisions in FPL. There is a big debate constantly about whether you should use statistics, whether you should use eye test. Obviously, a combination of both is good. A few people wanted to know, how do you make your decisions in FPL? Are you someone that just watches YouTube videos or watches mm. like match of the day? Or do you actually look at kind of expected data, touch maps? What is it that drives like, if you want to bring in a player, what is it that's causing you to want to bring that player in? It's like Drake said in his, in his central secret start. Combination, yeah. Combination, yeah. It's a combination yeah. of decisions that I make. <laughs> it's all, I like all, it. I like laughing it. in the back. <laughs> it's a it's a combination of things, you know. Um, so I watch YouTube videos. Yourself yeah. being um, literally probably the only FPL YouTuber I watch. <laughs> I see there's a lot of FPL nice. accounts on Twitter, so yep. I see I see them a lot, and um, Reddit as well. Reddit is good. Reddit, 
Yeah, Reddit, I'm not some subreddits. And then just myself, just my my intuition, educated guesses. Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's kind of like guesswork. But also, it's, there's data. You know, there's so much data you can go off. Um, expected goals, all that stuff, assists, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I literally read a whole book on expected goals. I've got a book at home. So I, I, like, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in that kind of stuff. But also, at the end of the day, it's more intuition and gut. And, you know, so I like to stick with my gut, but also educated guesses. You know, educate guesses and yeah. some intel from yourself. I might text you sometimes, but like, what do you think of this movie? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know we're the same thing. I don't know if you're going to be as nice to me. So. We'll yeah, see. we're going to discuss that in a second. But yeah, maybe I won't be giving you as much <laughs> advice potentially. Uh, but yeah. no, no I, I agree with that. And I think that's a big take home if you're watching this. I, I think trusting your intuition and gut. Sharky nailed it there. We've got data, of course, and we can try and predict what's going to happen. We are guessing what's going to happen in the future. It's impossible to do. Yep. And it's not like a different game like poker or anything like that where you, you've got odds. It, I mean, we're guessing what humans are going to do. Human behavior is so difficult mm-hmm. to predict. So mm-hmm. trying to accurately predict what players are going to do, you might as well trust your gut feeling a lot of the time. And I think especially the more you know and understand football, and Sharky's obviously someone that, that understands football very well, I think you're more likely to try and trust your eye tester and what you watch rather than over-relying on, on data. Um, so yeah, that'll make sense. So moving on to the, the third question is around kind of what we just discussed there yeah. like what are your goals in fpl this season what means more to you is it is it winning your mini leagues or do you have a, a specific rank in mind like what would be a, a good fpl season for you so some like someone that's been playing fpl for years i'm not yeah. even thinking about the overall rank i think towards if, if i get to a point in the season where i'm like oh my god i'm starting to start rank yeah. really high in the in, in, in the world or whatever then i'll look into that but initially my my aims are to win my mini leagues you know, because I'm, I'm going to be part of a few different leagues this season. Um, obviously, the SDS boys, I just messaged them and I just messaged them earlier today. I said, guys, make it a field team. We're going to create an SDS league to all the members, all the members of the podcast. It's like a, including our like cameraman and editors. So it'll be like 12 of us in the league. Um, yeah. And then we will like throughout the season, we'll let the audience see it. You know, we'll give you a mention on the podcast every week. Like if someone's yeah. having a bad week, we'll mention it so the, so the viewers can like enjoy it. There's a lot of, yep. I'm sure a lot of viewers watch uh, play up here. So winning that will be big for me. Like winning that is, is super, it is cool. Then we have our league, our mini, mini league, just four players, yourself, yep. me, Chunks and Stormzy. And that one, yep. there's already smoke being like so, so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone's throwing smoke. So yeah, uh, that one, I would love to come top of that one as well. That one will be sick. And then, yep. um, and then I want to create one for my, for the SDS audience. And just tweet yeah, out like and that. just have like hopefully a thousand people or so just join that league yeah. and they can get involved and they'll be in the league with the members as well so they can see how the rank will bust. And then sure. um and then yeah, maybe another one of my my, my friends from school. But the two I want to win is R one yeah. and the SDS one. Yeah, sounds good. I think Chunks did a very similar thing last season. So I was chatting to Chunks throughout the season about his FPL team and he didn't even know what overall rank was barely. But I told yeah. him at one point he was 50K and I was like, Chunks is 50K in the world. And he was like, he said to me, oh, cool. Like, is there like 100,000, 200,000 managers? I was like, Chunks is yeah. like 11 million managers. Yeah. And at that point, he, he, at that point, he started tracking his rank. So maybe it'll be similar for you. Yeah. Like, if you have a really yeah. strong season and you realize you're up there, then, then yeah. But um, I'll probably update everyone on the deadline streams probably on our league so yeah um that'll be an interesting one i mean i am favorite for that yeah of course i think chunks obviously was higher than yourself and, and Stormzy oh, yeah. last year so um ch- it's, it's for chunks to lose to be honest mm-hmm. pressure's on him there's no pressure on you no no but, pressure uh, on you as well though pressure on you there's, there's a lot of pressure on me there's yeah i can't lose you. this you know? your <laughs> yeah, city your man city because you know your man city yeah. chunks is arsenal yep no and then me and storms were like united and Liverpool. you know yeah, I feel you. I feel so, you. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'll take Liverpool because I know United ain't doing anything. So you can take United. <laughs> Stores can be nice. Sports to the news. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's quite, it's quite nice then. It's quite refreshing to have a guest on that is interested in mini leagues because it gets a bit kind of overly competitive with rank and so many people are just striving for this top 10K. Well, it's nice to just be focused on those around you. So I think that's... I think that's the best approach to FPL, and that's when you have the most fun with it. Um, yeah. Talking of, of SDS, again, if you have not checked SDS out, please do so. There will be a link in the description. Absolutely brilliant channel. Really football-focused, but they'll do live watch-alongs, prediction videos. They'll go through and, and debate like different rankings, like top 10 players in Premier League history, yeah. stuff like that. Um, you will be running an SDS league this year. I assume you didn't want, run one last year, or there wasn't an official one. A lot Ooh. of people, there was actually like three or four questions on this, which SDS member or couple of members do you think will be the best at FPL? And then mm-hmm. more importantly, you can call them out now. Which SDS members do you think will finish towards the bottom of the league and will really struggle? 
That's a good question. STS boys and FPL. So, going off last season, obviously, a few of them were in the league that, Chuck, it was me, Chuck Stokes in that league, a few of the STS boys were there. I'm trying to think who did really well. Um, <laughs> so, do you think it, do you think it's like football knowledge? Like, because obviously we, we saw the football mastermind series where that was really good, and and some people have excellent football, football knowledge. Football mastermind, that... yeah, we had obviously yeah, yeah Elias won that, so will, he might be really one on FPL. I think okay, so if I'm gonna have to pick people that I think will do well on FPL, I think why do they love the two finalists of football mastermind? Elias and Faisal, yeah. I think will do really well. Faisal was just like ultra competitor. He just likes competing in everything, whether he's good yeah. or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but he just likes to be in, you know. So Faisal will do well because he won't give up. He'll just try and, you know. Lias will, I think Lias will do pretty well. He did pretty well last season. Um, the worst star player. Star player. That's an interesting shout. Why, uh, why star player? Do you think? We, we, he's, he's bad at instincts. Every, so we, we <laughs> FPL last season, he was bad at. We, we used to do a predictions league. So with, with well, my mates, every, like five, three years in a row, we did the last 10 game weeks. I would get everyone to send me all 10 games, their prediction, right? It's super yeah. fun. 1-0, Fulham versus Leicester, 1-0, Fulham, whatever, every single game. And then you get a point for every correct result, two points for every correct scoreline. And then we'll do it. Three days in a row, you think, well, how is that possible? Ooh. You know, so he's nice bad at that stuff. Star player, and I think Liban will be very bad as well. Liban, interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, about, See, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have predicted that. From watching you STS, have I wouldn't that, have predicted yeah, those yeah. two. No, I wouldn't have predicted that. Hopefully, it's nice to fire anybody. Oh, yeah, and, no, yeah, they're gonna. And, and, and there's a guy called Fuad as well. He's really old, so he might, he might forget to make his changes. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna maybe recommend that Fuad, Fuad might be, might be bottom of the league. Like, I don't oh, want to call anyone out. Who is but... he as well? Fu oh yeah, Fu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll... Okay, but after Fu. <laughs> who is he? He'll just try and put yeah, like Fu loads of Liverpool players in, even if they're bottom of the yeah. league. Yeah, it'll just, it'll have that, it'll have that error message that says too many Liverpool players. <laughs> yeah, he'll try, he tried to include five Liverpool players and realize it's not possible. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Damn, right. a lot. It does right. well, be a funny season. Yeah, so so do, do keep up with SDS. Sharky's going to be mentioning it more throughout the season. And I think the closer you get towards the end of the season as well, it, it gets intense at the top and at oh. the bottom as well. Especially, you'll have to think of some sort of forfeit for the SDS. Oh, yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be a forfeit for the last for sure. And, it, oh, and for it'll, sure. Be, it'll be rough and, and it'll get intense towards the back end of the season. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, all sure. right then. Well, that is today's video. We're taking a look at Sharky's probable Game Week 1 team. But if there are any changes, he might potentially put it out on Twitter or he'll update you on SDS. Thank you very much for coming on the channel, man. I no, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You need to come to the studio soon. Do this again. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. I wanted to ask you a question as well. Yep. So you've seen an SDS Mastermind yep. and, and it went really well. Well, I want to know how you think you'd do because I know you're watching it. Yeah, how would I do on the SDS Football Mastermind? I think I would be excellent at the last three seasons. Mm. I think if it was specific to the last three seasons and more specifically Premier League, I think I would do very well. Yeah. I think when you start getting further away from the last three seasons, I would struggle. And I think especially if you look at different leagues, like there were some questions that like Faisal was just banging out from like different leagues that I just don't watch. Like, I'm very, because of my job yeah. is FPL. Like, I'm very FPL focused. Premier I'm very focused. Premier League focused. So if, yeah, if it was a recent one, but as soon as you start getting out, out of the last three years and out of the, out of the Premier League, I think I would struggle. You would struggle. I think, I think it'd do very well. I want to see you do it. That's what I was I hoping mean, at some I'll, point you were going to pop up and do it. But. I know, I know. Maybe one day we'll do a special episode while I do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but I think it'll do pretty well. So the invite is there. I'd love to see you like on season it. two. Okay. Represented the FPL Yeah, no, community. I'll take the invite. What do you say? I'll, I'll be willing to risk it. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take on? it. I'll be willing to to maybe humiliate myself. Uh, there we go, no, guys. I'll give it a go for sure. There we go. FPL Raptors has been announced. Season two. <laughs> What's the line? What? Season two. Yeah, go check out. By the way, if you, when you go onto SDS's channel, when you when you go and subscribe. <laughs> Look at the SDS Football Mastermind series. Um, you can go and watch it from the start. Basically, kind of like testing their football knowledge, and it went in from the different rounds. Ended the final was absolutely amazing as well. So go check it out. You can watch all of the episodes. Start at the beginning, and yeah, there will be a season two coming. And I think it will be a cracker, especially if if I'm going to be on there as well. It'll be fun. <laughs> well, for sure. we'll see you there. We'll see you there for sure. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, then, guys. Well, well, thank you very much for watching. Like I said, do check out all the links in the description below. And until next time, see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye.